much. Hi, everyone. It's great to be with you today. Um, my name's Rachel. Uh, I work for MPC, um, that's New Philanthropy Capital, uh, and I manage the Inspiring Impact Programme. So that's sort of the, the programme that we're here on behalf of today. Uh, and my colleague Catherine uh, has joined us as well. So I'm going to share my screen because I've got a few um, slides just to take you through initially. Um, just while I set this up, we'd like everybody to introduce themselves um, in the chat. So some of you might have been together in the first session, but I'm guessing there might be a few new faces here as well. So if you could just share your name, um, your organization and a word or a phrase that springs to mind for you when you think about collecting and using data to make decisions. So um, I'm just going to share my screen now, but if you guys can get going with that, that would be great. So we've got our first word here, time consuming. I think that's, uh, that's excellent. Um, rubbish going in and rubbish coming out. Uh, Will has said graphs. Uh, we've got Francis um, from Bromley Experts by Experience saying sort of confusing. Um, excellent. This is all, all stuff that Catherine and I can relate to. Got another confusing as well. Exciting, but need to justify the time. Confusing, dense, unfamiliar. OK, this is, a, you know, starting on a really optimistic note here. <laughs> I'm liking this. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, these are all really, really excellent points. Do keep um, introducing yourselves um, as you go. Um, the other thing that's worth knowing about the session is that uh, we're going to be um, doing uh, an activity on a bit of paper. So if you don't already have pen and paper in front of you, um, just go and grab that now. You'll just need one sheet of paper um, and at least one pen. If you've got multiple colours, that'll make it even more fun, but no pressure there because um, that's we're going to be doing an activity in groups. Um, we've got some more phrases coming in, trying to keep it all up to date. Um, hi, Lucy. Hi, Naveen. Hi, Claire. Got lots of, yeah, lot, great to see so many people with us. Thank you so much. Um, OK, so I'll just tell you a little bit more about um, Inspiring Impact. Uh, if you haven't introduced yourself yet, you'll see that we're just doing name, organisation and a word that springs to mind for you when you think about collecting and using data for uh, to make decisions in your organisation. Uh, so do keep introducing yourselves there. Um, so um, Inspiring Impact is a UK wide programme. We offer free uh, online resources, free peer learning events. Um, and it's delivered by this wonderful group of organizations on your screen now. So some of you might be familiar with some of these already. Um, and yeah, so that, that's, uh, that's the program that we're um, speaking to you about today. Uh, and the work is funded by the, the National Lottery Community Fund. So big thanks to them for that. So let me tell you a bit more um, about the session today. So I'm going to be doing a very short presentation um, and then we're going to go into a group activity uh, and we'll we'll split into uh, into groups to do that um, if, if possible. Um, if not, we can do it all together. That's absolutely fine. Um, so. Just a quick sort of heads up before I start, we've done our best to make this as relevant to a wide group of people as possible. Um, some of you will be from teeny tiny organisations and community groups, maybe with no paid staff. Some of you might have um, specific people in your organisation who are responsible for stuff to do with kind of evaluation and data. Um, some of you might deliver services. Some of you might be campaigning organisations. Some of you might already know quite a lot about kind of data and evidence. And for some of you, this might be totally brand new. So as we go through some of the advice and the exercise, do just, you know, really think about what of this is useful and relevant to me. We're absolutely not saying that everybody needs to do all of this um, or that our advice will be relevant to absolutely everybody. So we trust you guys to kind of use your best judgment for, for what you want to take away from today's session. Um, but we do hope that it'll be sort of thought provoking for everybody. Uh, so we've been chatting to lots of different organisations over the last couple of months in relation to decision making and what's, what data is useful for them at the moment. Um, and the, the questions on the screen in front of you now are things that we know people have found really useful to think about. Um, and obviously this is sort of, you know, COVID 
specific, but actually this applies all the time. I think it's just that this stuff has been sort of really put in the spotlight recently. Um, so we really believe that kind of all evaluation, all data and evidence work should be geared towards having information that is genuinely useful to improve the work that you do to ultimately make a bigger impact on society, on the people who, um, who you're trying to support. So that's sort of the whole focus, really. We're not massively interested in, um, in just sort of collecting this stuff for the sake of it or having lots of things that sort of enable you to make you know, grand claims and, and sort of impress people. It's, it's really got to be about kind of um, improving the work that you do and, and motivating your staff and, and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so as you can see that the questions um, on the screen go through kind of what decisions do I need to make now, soon, in the future? Um, what information am I gonna need to make those decisions? Um, have I already got that information? Is it possible to collect that data? And what am I actually going to do with it once I've got it? So it, it's, you know, pretty common sense stuff, but actually starting from the point of view of what information do I need can be quite a helpful way of doing it rather than sort of like just assuming that everything that you've got is actually going to be useful. Um, so, you know, sort of worth bearing all those questions in mind, but today um, we thought it would be interesting to, to kind of zoom in on questions three and four specifically to talk a bit more about maybe the data that you've already got and how that's already used or how it could be more useful. So when I say data or kind of information, um, this is what I'm talking about. So this is a, something called the five types of data that's um, something from the Inspiring Impact Programme, but is increasingly used by, by lots of organisations. And it's essentially helping, helping us to understand that there are lots of different types of data that we might be able to collect and use in relation to the people that we are trying to support. Um, so user data is just like who those people are, what are their characteristics? And it might seem like the most common sense thing in the world, but we often work with organisations who don't actually have a brilliant grasp of who are the people that I'm working with? Um, what kind of distinguishes them from maybe other groups who this service isn't for? Um, so being really aware of, of that can, can be a really good starting point. Um, then we've got engagement data, which is information about how people um, are actually using your service or engaging with your campaign or whatever it is, and to what extent that is. So most of us, if we're sort of delivering services, might use something like an attendance log or sort of sign up forms, things like that, where you can start to get a sense of how people are taking part in things. But actually, that's incredibly powerful information that we often just think is kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, we just, you know, keep track of who comes to things. But really, it, it's telling you um, that the sort of consistency of people's engagement. Um, and then when you get feedback from people, which is the next type of data, knowing to what extent they've engaged with you can really put the feedback in context. So if you get really terrible feedback, often you might, you might be looking at survey data for, for sort of feedback data, and maybe people have, have not given particularly good feedback. But if you don't actually know who that person is and to what extent they took part in the program or the activity, it's sort of hard to figure out like, how important is that feedback? So somebody might have come to one out of six sessions and then given really bad feedback. But the thing, you know, the whole point was that they were supposed to come to six sessions and, and that was going to make the difference. So sort of starting to join up all these bits of information can be really helpful when you start getting into, into feedback and outcomes data. So after we talked about feedback. So that's just, you know, we all know what that is. It's what people think um, about the service or the campaign or the activity, whatever it is that you're doing. Then we've got our outcomes data which is the uh, short-term changes, benefits or assets that people get from the service. So for some things that might be um, people increasing their knowledge in something. So if you're trying to sort of educate people about a topic or an issue that might be relevant, sometimes it's about attitudes. So kind of how people feel about things. Um, so maybe, they, maybe that's how they feel about themselves. So feeling sort of more confident, uh, more resilient, um, that kind of stuff or maybe it's sort of how they feel about other people as well how they feel about a particular issue that would be an attitude as well if you're sort of trying to change how people feel through a campaign um, and sometimes it's sort of skills and behaviors so things that people actually do so maybe people are, are stopping doing something risky um, that they were doing before or, or maybe they're sort of starting to do something that, that you hoped they would do 
So, um, so those, those are the outcomes. And then the final type of data is impact data, which is a really, really long term difference. So this is the stuff that kind of in a way has little to do with your specific work because it's what people go away and do themselves on their own in the long run. So it can be really difficult for us to say, you know, we've we've created this change. Um, but in some cases, it is interesting to, to sort of think about um, trying to figure out what what the what the long term impact of your work would be. But it's quite tricky to do and quite expensive. Um, so we that's why we really want people to focus on some of those earlier types of data or actually there's so much to be learned um, and they're much easier to gather that information. Um, and, and therefore cheaper. Um, so before we go into the activity, there's just one more thing which I wanted to mention, um, which is about keeping people safe in relation to the data that we collect and use. So you'll all be uh, familiar with um, the, the dreaded acronym GDPR um, and, and sort of have hopefully seen a change in how maybe some of the sort of mailing lists and organizations that you interact with treat you and your data. And we need to be really mindful of this with anybody that we're working with as well. So um, the ICO has, has a few really basic tips, keeping it clear about what you're doing with data, um, keeping it lawful. Um, so making sure that you've got consent to, to have that data and to use that data, keeping it secure, um, so, you know, using password protection and, and really thinking about making sure that information doesn't get into the wrong hands um, and then keeping it to a minimum, which is only collecting, keeping and using what you actually need. Um, so that's just sort of a few a few tips to bear in mind. Uh, we'll send the slides around afterwards and there's loads more information about data protection um, on the ICO website if you if you want to look at that in a bit more detail. So. Uh, to make this as, as useful and practical as possible, we're going to dive into an activity now. Um, so it's an activity that gets us thinking about all the different information that we have and where it is. Um, and we're, you know, this is not, you're not going to come away with like some beautiful grand finished plan because uh, I hate to break it to you, but it's not going to happen in half an hour. Um, but I do hope that it sparks a few ideas and gives you a sort of framework that you can then keep using um, and maybe also, you know, encourages you to, to go and check out some of the other free um, tools and resources on the Inspiring Impact website. Um, so do we have um, breakout group functionality? Yeah, amazing. So yes, Catherine's going to into two different groups. Yeah, perfect. So Catherine's going to split us up. Um, I'll be with one group. Catherine will be with the, with the other group and then we'll explain the activity and go through that together. Um, how did you all find it? We had some really interesting conversations about sort of duplication, potential duplication and the fact that sharing this, uh, doing this with a team and seeing where the differences are and people's perceptions of what data you have could be really interesting. And also a bit about um, not necessarily uh, sharing data with uh, external stakeholders, but not, not necessarily sharing them amongst users and showing each other the different progress that people are making and kind of how we uh, share that a little bit more. Mm. Um, great, so I'm we're really conscious of time. We should probably just share a little bit more about how you can access these. Yeah, so um, we'll, we'll send, um, hopefully uh, Claire will help us sort of send a little follow-up email round afterwards with the slides uh, and also Absolutely. the link to, um, to our website, the Inspiring Impact website. Um, we've, we've actually got a download on the website about this exact activity. So if you wanted to run this yourself with colleagues, um, then, then you can do that. And we've got a much more kind of detailed, in-depth, like table-based version as well, if you really, really want to get into the nitty gritty of reviewing your data. Um, so we, yeah, we, we hope that's useful. Um, and we'll also send around a link to our newsletter as well, where you can find out about upcoming peer learning events um, and, and all the other free resources that we've got on the website. Um, so yeah, it's been so brief. It's felt like an absolute whirlwind, but, um, but thank you all so much for, for getting involved in that activity. We've really enjoyed spending a bit of time with you um, and hope you enjoy the rest of, of, the, of the event. <laughs>